Hidden in the mangrove forests of the Niger Delta are thousands of artisanal oil refineries producing fuels for domestic and international markets. In this video, an owner will explain how a typical refinery works, followed by an analysis of the quality of fuels produced compared to official fuels. It highlights a productive trade which creates employment and fuels, but it is deemed illegal with severe impacts on environment, health and corruption. This video is part of research into incentives for people to engage with the artisanal oil industry. To explore if this is scope for harnessing these capabilities in alternative sustainable economic activities. It follows a previous video with further discussion on incentives and solutions. The refineries have evolved over time and this one is more advanced than on average. But they typically have the same core elements. Refining, cooling, separation and storage. A marketer makes a delivery of crude oil by pumping it through a wide hose. At this site, it is pumped directly into the refining pot. The refining pot or oven refines or cooks the crude oil. Fire hits it from below, filled by crude oil. Under high temperature and pressure, vapors are released and rise into a series of pipes where they cool and condense into different fuels. As the camp owner explains. This tank is used as a coolant. There is water that runs through it. There is a pipe connected up. So look at it. So that coolant is constantly on. So there is a pumping machine that takes in the seawater to this pipe. So this pipe is servicing the, the two cooling systems. So you can see that part of all these pipes are inside. So the processing passes through this pipe and then comes to this single mat. And then it goes from here to the pot, the, the receiving tank. Different fuels are released at different temperatures. At first 30 minutes, gas will come out of it. One hour, 30 minutes, there will be flow of PMS. Then after the two, uh, one, one and a half hour PMS, we get to kerosene, and that will be for two hours. Then diesel will start coming out. The first diesel that we normally got from here is like a Russian diesel, it's blue. That will rush for like another an hour, 30 minutes. Then it becomes normal. Three and a half hours. Total nine hours of production. A valve enables workers to extract fuels or let them flow into large storage tanks. So you can see uh, a very little uh, box of uh, one and a half feet by two feet and there is a valve connected to it. In case of extraction of uh, PMS or DPK, that extraction has to be done through that valve. That is what it's doing right now as I'm talking to you. This refinery has an innovative feature which others do not the fire control system. It is an important safety feature that evolved to ensure accidents don't take place as they did in the past. So this, this place is the powerhouse to that place. So this is where the, the fire is being generated. This generator is a pumping machine. It pumps from the tank to this control valve. Here. Then it goes from this plant to the pot. So you can see how it is made. 
some fish will stay in the pipe in, inside the under the open. So the pipes that came from the control panel end here, then from here, there's a stainless pipe which is saying that is pouring the blast. The system gives the workers more control over the fire. So the the rushing is minimized from here. If the fire is not properly on, it, it, it's from here. And if it is excess, it has to be reduced from here. The case the production has finished, they'll just knock it off from behind. Then the fire comes down automatically. The camp owner collects the waste, unlike at other refineries where it is dumped into the environment. He sells it as low pore fuel oil, which is used to power factory machinery or as engine oil. So that is the reservoir for the waste left over as LPFO. So this is the valve. Now the valve is locked, but immediately the production is finished. Then it will open in the morning after when the, the, the pot are cold. It is not a waste. Those products are also being supplied to people who need it. They are taking it to factory all over the country for, for, for useful purpose. Gas is released via a chimney for safety. And as you can see, a very high pole, what we use as a vent, so that is where the, the gas is expelled. That is so that there will be no, be, there, there will be no ex explosion. While the refineries produce employment and develop skills in communities, they have severe environmental consequences. Toxic oil and intense heat damage surrounding areas. Degrading land, water, mangrove forests and ecosystems. Workers wear protection to minimize skin exposure, but remain heavily exposed to the fire and smoke, which has severe health consequences. The nightly emissions also exacerbate an air pollution epidemic in nearby towns and cities where fuels pollute during combustion too. The artisanal oil industry is also deemed illegal and corrupt for buying sterling crude oil, dealing in refined petroleum products on the black market and paying bribes to security agents. Laboratory analysis suggests a low standard of fuel is on offer in the Niger Delta. All fuel samples, artisanal and official, were found to be more viscous than they should be. High viscosity adversely affects performance of engines, increases maintenance costs and creates higher pollutant emissions. Yet, artisanal gasoline samples were generally less viscous than official ones and had lower levels of pollutants such as sulfur. These findings reinforce consumer perceptions that artisanal fuels are better quality, pollute less, and are more readily available than official fuels. It also highlights that extremely low quality fuels are being imported into Nigeria and sold to the public in many cases with pollutant levels far higher than official standards allow. Artisanal oil refineries produce fuels that can be of comparable quality to official supplies. They also develop skills and provide employment for thousands of people across the region. But the refineries are highly damaging and illegal so must be addressed by policy makers. The skills being developed could be channeled into other productive economic areas, say refiners, communities and local experts. We understand the damage is causing to the environment, we understand the challenges and what have you. 
they are not also happy over security uh, harassment as a result of what they are doing. But as it is now, they keep telling us that there is nothing they can do unless some alternative job, sustainable job is provided for them. Investment by the government and private sector to generate diversified and sustainable livelihood options while protecting the environment and providing access to clean energy. Replacing the artisanal oil industry will also reduce pollution in a critical biodiversity hotspot and contribute towards achieving Nigeria's emissions targets. For more discussions on the incentives that make artisanal oil refining persist despite government crackdowns, watch our first video in the series.